in the hills above Rome, a Renaissance villa and a home to a privileged artistic community. Its prime location has long acted as a magnet for the powerful, from the Medici family that gives it its name to Napoleon Bonaparte, who acquired it for the Academy of France in 1803. The Villa Medici has long been a French foothold in the Eternal City for generations of artists. Here it's a melting pot of culture, or at any rate, that's what we aim for. It's a laboratory for creativity. And we have a special mission. Some of our objectives run counter to each other, preserve the heritage and remain at the cutting edge of contemporary creation. A host of famous creators have spent time here, musicians like Berlioz and Debussy, architects like Garnier, the painter Ancre, sculptors like Felger. Creativity requires you to look for new paths and to make mistakes. What we offer here is a kind of luxury that is unique to the 21st century, which is a time for research, a time to think about something else. Rome has long attracted the cream of French artists. But while it nurtures creativity thanks to its unique location, the Villa Medici also looks to the future. Each year, chosen from 600 candidates, 16 artists take up an 11-month-long fellowship. The writer Kauta Adimi is one. With four novels under her belt, Adimi's next work will be based in Rome. It was actually the first idea I had for a novel, but for a very long time it just wasn't the right moment. And today it is. For this novel in particular, I needed to get away from my daily routine. I needed time, and it needed to be time that I wouldn't have to steal from my job or from my other activities. And that's always meant that I couldn't devote myself fully to writing. And that's what the Villa Medici has given me, in fact. The Villa Medici is a haven for its artists, allowing them the luxury to create without distraction. After 15 years as an interior designer, here Noemi Godard's project is what the insides of buildings say about us. Her scope gazes through the ages, ranges across Italy and focuses on Rome. Rome is very inspiring. It's an open book in terms of architectural history, art history and the sciences. It's an exceptional playing field. It carries within it a host of constructed situations that already exist and that cover a huge array of historical periods. So it's an experimental breeding ground that's fabulous when you look at questions to do with the interior. Rome's rich history, from antiquity to the Renaissance and beyond, serve as a backdrop to the villa. For the artists, that unique urban tapestry is a fountain of inspiration. I think it's important for the residents to establish a contact with the city of Rome. Rome is a city that is very at ease with the idea of art, with the idea of culture in general. So here is a space to naturally express creativity. Experimentation and risk-taking on the pathway to creating art that will strike a chord with the public. In a few hours, the Nuit Blanche exhibition begins. It's the first showcase of the work commenced by this year's fellows in front of thousands of Rome locals. Noemi Godard's first draft is taking shape. I'm building a narration that uses the iconography, but it also contains stories and above all the relationship between buildings, their functions and the people who lived in them. And that's the crux of what I'm working on. It's like a giant fresco that has been hung on the wall. So now we'll see how it cohabits with the space. Just a few weeks after arriving in the villa, the exhibition is a work in progress that's also a chance to gain a new perspective. Yes, it's almost done. The villa hosts artists from diverse backgrounds and disciplines. A few metres away, the atmosphere is rather more effervescent. The Catalan composer Hector Barra is rehearsing. He plans to write an opera based on the work of Italian filmmaker Pier Paolo Pasolini during his residency. In the past, he's worked with celebrated authors such as Marie Ndiaye and Jonathan Little. But for now, he's seizing on the opportunity to collaborate with the talents that are also his neighbours, setting to music a children's story written by Cauta Adimi. We rehearsed for a week together, and it was an extraordinary experience. Kauter Hadimi is a well-known novelist already, and she's already fantastic. 
I wanted to compose for her story because I wanted to see how my music develops, how it develops a certain tenderness and mystery. Inspired by the avian neighbors in the villa's gardens, Kauter Adimi's Pink Peacock, with music composed by Ecto Parra, was written in the first weeks of the residency. A productive beginning that receives a warm welcome at its public debut. Noemi, Kauter and Hector, as well as the other residents, are ambassadors for French culture. The Nuit Blanche nocturnal exhibition places cheek by jowl the fellow's contemporary work with the villa's centuries-spanning collection. Installations, readings, dance, artistic happenings and even culinary performances. In all, the one-off Nuit Blanche exhibition attracts 5,000 visitors as culture that's made in France and in Rome sets ablaze the night sky of the Eternal City. <laughs>